Why do bad things happen to good people? This is one of the great questions which theologians and philosophers have contended with for thousands of years. Numerous Christian thinkers have addressed it, and many answers to the question may be found within Christendom. Too many. A great number of people bearing more confidence than knowledge, more vanity than humility, and more ignorance than thought, have tried to answer the question, and the plethora of bad answers which superfluous theologians have provided, has made finding a competent response to the question quite difficult. Difficult, but not impossible. Saint Augustine of Hippo provided his own answer to the question in the first book of his, City of God. In this answer, he addresses the question in the form of, why do good things happen to bad people? And we can discern from his answer why bad things may happen to good people. What follows is a narration of his answer. Orthodox and Catholic Christians can trust its validity. Some may say, why, then, is divine compassion extended even to the ungodly and ungrateful? Why, but because it was the mercy of him who daily makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For though some of these men, taking thought of this, repent of their wickedness and reform, some, as the apostle says, despising the riches of his goodness and long-suffering, after their hardness and impenitent heart, treasure up unto themselves wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Nevertheless does the patience of God still invite the wicked to repentance, even as the scourge of God educates the good to patience. And so, too, does the mercy of God embrace the good that it may cherish them, as the severity of God arrests the wicked to punish them, to the divine providence it has seemed good to prepare in the world to come for the righteous good things, which the unrighteous shall not enjoy, and for the wicked evil things, by which the good shall not be tormented. But as for the good things of this life, and its ills, God has willed that these should be common to both, that we might not too eagerly covet the things which wicked men are seen equally to enjoy, nor shrink with an unseemly fear from the ills which even good men often suffer. There is, too, a very great difference in the purpose served both by those events which we call adverse and those called prosperous. For the good man is neither uplifted with the good things of time, nor broken by its ills. But the wicked man, because he is corrupted by this world's happiness, feels himself punished by its unhappiness. Yet often, even in the present distribution of temporal things, does God plainly evince his own interference. For if every sin were now visited with manifest punishment, nothing would seem to be reserved for the final judgment. On the other hand, if no sin received now a plainly divine punishment, it would be concluded that there is no divine providence at all. And so of the good things of this life, if God did not by a very visible liberality confer these on some of those persons who ask for them, we should say that these good things were not at his disposal, and if he gave them to all who sought them, we should suppose that such were the only rewards of his service, and such a service would make us not godly, but greedy rather, and covetous. Wherefore, though good and bad men suffer alike, we must not suppose that there is no difference between the men themselves, because there is no difference in what they both suffer. For even in the likeness of the sufferings, there remains an unlikeness in the sufferers, and though exposed to the same anguish, virtue and vice are not the same thing. For as the same fire causes gold to glow brightly, and chaff to smoke, and under the same flail the straw is beaten small, while the grain is cleansed, and as the leaves are not mixed with the oil, though squeezed out of the vat by the same pressure, so the same violence of affliction proves, purges, clarifies the good, but damns, ruins, exterminates the wicked. And thus it is that in the same affliction the wicked detest God and blaspheme, while the good pray and praise. So material a difference does it make, not what ills are suffered, but what kind of man suffers them. For, stirred up with the same movement, mud exhales a horrible stench, and ointment emits a fragrant odor. Thank you for listening to this narration of St. Augustine's answer to the question of why good things may happen to wicked men and vice versa. If you desire to find more material such as what you have just heard, then you will need to subscribe to this channel and like the video. This has been Gene Botkin, Director of Theosis Christian, Slave of Christ.